Amazing. Um, uh, this is the seventh age of man, of course, as you know from that speech from As You Like It. And I'd much rather be in the second age of man, the whining schoolboy dragging his feet with a satchel to school. Um, but that's not what we're talking about today. Let's start off as a facial surgeon uh, and re recap on what the face is all about. Um, the point about the face is that if we're talking about aging, um, the things that really blight us are cardiovascular disease, respiratory disease, diabetes, uh, gangrene, um, arthritis. These are the things that keep us awake at night, that cause us to drag our feet all over the place. And actually the face doesn't really cause much pain, um, cause those kind of problems in age. But of course, it's what we project to the world. And so if we're thinking about the psyche and the soma, and the impact, as Professor Boronova was talking about, psychological impacts, um, how our face looks also impacts on how we feel about ourselves. And actually, um, you've had some talks on cosmetic surgery, not something I particularly do, but if people have cosmetic surgery to their face, does it make them feel a lot better? Um, does it, it, it alleviate the pains that they have in their legs, in their hips, in their back? It probably does. If you're feeling good about yourself because your face looks good, then you feel better um, physically, your, your endorphins and enkephalins go up. Um, but we're going to deal with uh, the, the wrong side of things here, not cosmetic surgery, as you'll see in a moment. So what I want to do is recap, first of all, on what facial functions uh, we, we do. I, I mean, obviously, appearance is very, very important, not only for recognition and identity, but also for peer assessment, how people look at us. And of course, with our peers, we want to look younger, we want to look fitter, we want to look healthier, we want them to say to us, wow, you look fantastic today, not, you're looking ill today. Um, but there are also functional things, breathing, eating, speech, and we've got all these special senses all over the face, plus protection of the brain. So these are the facial functions. If we think about, um, now I, I hope you can see that and it's not too light in here, um, uh, because some of the pictures are lovely and gruesome, um, and I wouldn't want you to miss out on any of them. Um, the, uh, here we've got a patient who's having a maxillectomy, and obviously that's going to impact on the function of the sinuses, warming the air, moistening the air, and affecting the airway as well. Um, the special senses you're all familiar with, eyesight, hearing, smell, and taste, and these are very important as well in functional things. And then, of course, if we're thinking about how the face appears, we can look at a picture of somebody statically and say, well, that looks great, but the moment they start moving, as this woman does with her facial um, palsy on the right-hand side, you can see that expression is, uh, is badly affected down here. So we don't just want to have a face that looks good, we want to have a face that moves symmetrically and looks good in action as well as in the static view. Uh, and then of course we've mentioned recognition as well. Um, this is all what we'd like to look like. In fact, this is one of my patients who had uh, surgery on her jaws when she was younger, um, and I'm very pleased to show her photograph because I think she looks gorgeous. Um, she didn't look quite so gorgeous before the facial deformity surgery, um, but I use her as a picture for the Hellenic norms because I think that uh, she has uh, great symmetry now uh, with the eyes, the nose, the lips, uh, the chin, all in the right position. But if we're thinking about aesthetics and the face, the face has several components to it. It has, sorry, it has the, um, uh, the skeletal scaffold over which is draped the skin drape. The hair is very important, and of course the speakers after coffee are going to talk about hair loss as I stand uh, or as I sit down and look in the mirror as I did yesterday in the restaurant and I see that kind of ball patch increasing in size on the top of my head which fortunately I can't see but it's marching inexorably towards the front and then I will be able to see it and that tells me I'm growing older. Um, the sinuses are very important for lightening the skull. Um, the mouth and teeth as you'll see in some of the slides, the moment that the teeth are lost, 
the jaw bones shrink away, and then you have a kind of sunken in face. Um, the nose, of course, is very important. We, we're all concerned about our nasal appearance, but when we have no nose, it looks even more horrible. Um, uh, and the neuromuscular units we talked about before, all these are important in the aesthetics. So just going through, now the reason I want to go through this is because you're going to see some horrific pictures in a moment of patients with cancer. You're about to give me something. Is it still, are you still having difficulty hearing me at the back? No, fine. Pardon? I can walk. No, 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 it's okay, fine. I'm happy to stand still now. I've got my MBTs on and I'm happy to stand still. I'm hopping from foot to foot. Um, so, thank you very much for coming. Is it okay to change your mind? Yes, okay. As long as you switch it off. Um, okay, so we don't get any feedback. Right, thanks a lot. Um, so, um, what I want you to be aware of is when we're talking about camouflaging the face, when, because we're going to be talking in a moment about removing whole segments of the face for cancer, because that is a disease that I treat and that affects the face, um, we, uh, we, we want to get some of these prominences right. So the superorbital bar is vital to get right. The zygomatic prominence is vital to get right. The nasal aperture and the nasal bone is vital to get right. Um, the chin point and the angle of the jaw and the lower border of the mandible and the eye position are all vital to get right. Um, so, let's come to the nitty gritty of disease and I said of course, although I'm against aging, unfortunately that isn't what I do, I treat the consequences of aging. And I only want to talk about two diseases, although uh, there are many diseases we could talk about because facial deformity does affect people in age, uh, trauma infects people in age, facial pain and infection affect people in age, and so does salivary gland disease. We know that we all dry up our saliva as we get older and we snore a great deal more um, and we have difficulty with tasting food a great deal more. So we have all these problems, but I just want to flick over arthritis before I move on to the substance of my talk, which is unfortunately neoplasia. I'm very sorry about that. I know that you've come along to listen to how you can defeat age and live forever, fit and healthy, but I'm going to talk about how you can deal with one of the diseases that affect the face so that you can live a little bit longer with that disease and not look too disfigured. Um, so, arthritis first of all. Osteoarthritis doesn't cause much pain in the jaw, surprisingly. Can be managed with injections, um, and if need be, can be managed with fairly simple surgery. Uh, this is arthroscopy, uh, uh, arthroscopic view of the jaw joint with some uh, fronds of tissue interfering with movement in the jaw joint. Um, uh, it's a very simple operation, takes about an hour and a half. In fact, I use an incision around here so that it's it's pretty well invisible. This is the zygomatic arch leading to the cheekbone, and here's the condyle of the mandible, and that takes you in. Here's the zygomatic arch, there's the ear, that's the chin down there. This is the temporalis muscle, and it's a very easy operation. You open up the capsule of the joint, you uh, may need to take out the disc, the cartilage disc that's in the joint, um, and you may transpose some temporalis muscle there to replace the disc. You wake the patient up and you bully them in the first post-operative day, and you make sure they can open wide uh, within two days, discharge them from hospital only when they can open wide, and then um, they'll be fine. Uh, it's a very straightforward problem. Uh, but if we come on to neoplasia, obviously the best thing you can do with neoplasia is to prevent it in the first place, and I'll talk about that a little bit towards the end of the talk. Then there's the physical treatment, and to borrow Professor Boronova's um, talk, we mustn't forget the supportive emotional and psychological support, which is vital because the psychological response to cancer anywhere in the body is critical on the outcome, probably on the outcome of the life expectancy of the patient, but also on the quality of life that the patient has. Um, and it isn't linked totally to the physical outcome that the patient has. Um, if we're talking about psyche versus soma um, with facial cancer, we've got the first problem, fear of the disease. Is it going to mutilate me? And then the fear of the consequences of the treatment. Will I be able to speak afterwards? Will I eat normally? Will I be disfigured? Will I be able to socialize? Will my friends recognize me? Will I keep my job? Will I keep my partner? 
And in people of our age, will my grandchildren or my children not want to sit on my knee because I smell, because I dribble, because I can't talk properly? All these kind of things. When I go out and try and talk to people, will you say, can you repeat that please? 